We got anything to start us off? Anything? We covered AI. We covered the death of movie theaters. <laughs> I think that's okay. about it. I think that's <laughs> that's the breadth of human experience that there is. I don't that's think there's anything 20, else. Twenty four. Nothing else is really happening in the world this year. Nope. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I I have one which I did not know. Which okay. Robert Town, the screenwriter, I, died couple, yesterday or the day before. I did see that. And. Well, the thing I did not know is that he gave screenwriting credit to his dog for the movie Grace Sto- Stroke. Grace Stoke? I don't even know. It's some kind of Tarzan movie that I've never <laughs> seen from the mid 80s. <laughs> and I don't know how that worked because he must have seen the movie, thought it was terrible, and then put his. It's dog's name on it. Nobody knew that at the time. Oh, Did you so see this? It's, it's like a, it's like an Alan Smithy type of situation. Yeah, where although sort of he disowned the, it. Yeah, he had the choice, and he, I don't, his dog ha, has a name that looks like a human name. It's like P H something. Oh. I don't know. It's a last <laughs> name. It's like two two initials and a last name. So I thought that was that was oh, quite it's fascinating. Like, that he, yeah, uh, <laughs> this guy this guy Pierre wrote this movie. Who's Pierre? Uh, it's my dog. Right, right. Yeah, I that that's a really like serendipitous thing because I feel like this happens in my life where I will watch something for the first time and inevitably within a couple days someone involved with with what I watched will die. I it's it's very <laughs> strange Uh-oh. because over the over the weekend we watched the first Mission Impossible movie and he wrote that he wrote the first three i believe oh okay oh wow i had to look this guy up i'd never even like i mean he wrote chinatown so that's like his big claim to fame yeah yeah i'm surprised he didn't know his name just off of that alone (laughs) (laughs) but i was like i i I saw people on 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 twitter talking about it and i looked him up and then yeah it shows like mission impossible and i'm like no way like i just watched that like two days ago (laughs) <laughs> it was good it was uh, really cool yeah it was good yeah. um i'm seeing that gray stoke was was nominated for best screenplay so does that mean that yeah. his dog <laughs> is, an, is an oscar nominee right <laughs> yes that was the other part of that i forgot to say p p period h period vazak is Vazak. the name of his dog which yeah. i need to see this movie now because it must be. It has probably something to do with the Lord of the Flies. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or or maybe it's just a a series of all the characters just uh, are really happy and hungry and always. I don't know. I'm trying to think of dog things like like written in the mind of a dog. <laughs> People are like, oh, it's just, it's just so, it just makes you so happy. It's yeah. Uh, yeah, I f- it's weird. I th- I'm pretty sure I've even seen this this poster. Uh, mm. for that movie. But uh, oh, I the reason I know it is because in the '80s, this is so far back for you. Uh, the VHS rental stores, you just go through them, and this is one I would see. I never saw the movie, but I've the seen cover. that cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, from the VHS many times. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I do have movies like that for sure that, like, I mean, I have some memories of where it was primarily VHS, but, yeah, for me it was mostly DVDs. <laughs> but, yeah. like, I do have a, a plenty of movies that uh, I – you know feel like i know by heart from just having seen the cover just <laughs> dozens of times at the at the video rental store or whatever <laughs> it's different it's 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 different than just you know scrolling netflix and seeing the thumbnails that change mm-hmm. every other week or whatever it's not the same yeah we um we they've been doing uh at, at our local theater they've been doing like the summer of sequels so like last week was Mad Max two, and then this week was, uh, the Lost World Jurassic Park, mm-hmm. uh, which I didn't know Stan or uh, Stanley uh, Steven Spielberg did the second one as well. Mm-hmm. I, I thought he only did the first one. I think he did the third one too. I, I he, he didn't. Did I lo- I, I, oh, I he looked didn't. It up. Oh, okay. Um, 
but uh, I specifically remember the VHS tape of that movie because I believe it had the holographic thing on the front of it, oh. where if you move it di- side to side, the T-Rex like bursts through the logo <laughs> of it. It's like, where's that? I feel like maybe some specialty like boutique Blu-ray places will do like a fun sort of like, you know, 3D animated thing. But it's like, that's another like lost art. And it's like, as soon as I saw it, I was like immediately transported back to my like grandma's basement (laughs) watching that movie, which I remembered a surprising amount of like that. The beginning of that movie has probably one of the funniest uh, match cuts that I've ever seen where um like the little girl runs off and she gets attacked by the little tiny that's like, like the main scene i remember from that movie because it used to terrify me as a kid it, yeah, <laughs> she like runs off and she gets attacked by these little velociraptors and then her parents hear her screams and so they run over and it it like tilts up to the mom and she looks and she sc- just blood curdling scream oh. and then it switches to jeff goldblum standing in a subway <laughs> But he's like behind, he's in front of like an advertisement that's like a tropical background. So it looks like she's screaming at the sight of Jeff Goldblum. Oh. <laughs> but then he like, he walks off into the subway. But it's just like the look on his face where he's just like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so funny. That's awesome. Dark movie, actually. Pretty, pretty dark and, and like cynical and mean. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, Probably. yeah. Just iconic VHS covers. That's, yeah. I think that's what you guys were talking about. I had to let my cat in because <laughs> she is can't have shut doors at all. <laughs> yeah, kind of just like you know, re- memorable ones from like seeing it at the store or, or whatever. And like oh yeah, that that kind of stuff. Or you know the the if. And en- enigmatic double tape movies, or like The Godfather, oh, yeah. or Titanic, or yep. or the ones that have the little, um, like the 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 thing like folds out or whatever, you know. <laughs> There's like a little like reading insert thing there. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. Oh, I th- I have one for a uh, some like anniversary. It is like a twentieth. Is there maybe it's like a tenth? I don't know because the tape's pretty old. But for like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, oh, that's one for that. Yeah, yeah. My dad had The Godfather. He had Titanic. I think Saving Private Ryan was also a two taper. I know Magnolia was, even though I've never seen that one in the wild. Meet Joe Black is because I have that because someone left it in my. That is a long movie. in my apartment complex there's like a table in the lobby downstairs that people just leave shit on and someone like left a bunch of vhs tapes and i saw the double meet joe black and i was like i'm gonna grab that just because it's it's funny to me that someone left that down there (laughs) (laughs) that kind of went some places we kept we kept it modern and you know (laughs) relevant (laughs) um okay well uh Welcome back, ladies and gents, to another episode of There Will Be Duds. This is episode 154. Um, I've really lost track since we went to, like, bi-weekly. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and I am your your regular, I'm your, I'm your co-host, TJ, and with me as always. As always, I am Nick, and returning with us uh, once again is Dr. Josh Matthews. Hello, Josh. Hello. Yeah. You had to give me a movie about kids killing kids. Thanks a lot. I, yeah. <laughs> I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. It's it's my favorite genre. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, that uh, that that movie about child murders. Um, w- well, not usually by other children but when we were doing our little villains bracket we i remember noticing like how many movies we have covered about child murderers (laughs) or like people that do harm to children like m yeah m or big one megan is missing (laughs) that kind of yeah yeah i don't know there i know there were some more because we like made note of it in there like this is weird (laughs) Um, disturbing trend (laughs) uh but anyway the one this week 
is Lord of the Flies from 1963, directed by Peter Brook. Uh, it is an adaptation of the novel by William Golding about a uh, plane full of uh, British schoolboys uh, who they crash land on an island and uh, are stranded there for an indeterminate amount of time um, and start to form their own society. But as the the novel, the main thesis is that kind of the the base nature of human is evil in, in a way uh, that their society deteriorates and they uh, kind of start to lose themselves. It's, it's a very it's a very uh, it's it's a ve- like like watching this again. Like yeah, this feels like something that you would have to read in in school or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> and. I yeah I kept this one in there in the or in the cup because this was is was maybe my favorite book that I had to read for for school um it's either this or I mentioned before Frankenstein love Frankenstein um but this one really like struck a chord with me the book I I absolutely adore um but whenever you have to like watch a movie as part of a school thing it's always like boring and you're like oh, i have to watch this for school uh. <laughs> and so i wanted to kind of give this one another another test and um i don't know <laughs> i don't i don't know but I'll, uh, <laughs> i guess i yes I, I was following it but um uh i don't know i don't want to like totally steer the, the whole conversation but that's just kind of my my history with with the movie i guess so I'm in the total opposite camp where I did not have to read this in school right. and I have never seen the movie. Uh, I knew, I knew some things about it. I knew there was a character named piggy. I thought he was like the antagonist. I thought piggy mm. was like the shithead kid that everybody hates and his dad. Well, he is. is. <laughs> well, <laughs> He's he's annoying. I don't think that's he's a, the kid that, that everyone like, hates. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but and and I think I, I knew that he died, uh, and but I I thought it was like my just going based on what I had heard about the book. I thought it was like a it was like a justified killing because he had gone too far. But it was it was, it was the other kids that are that take it a little bit too oh, far. Oh, I see. No, there's no real like no proper retribution or anything like no, that. No, yeah. The only ones that die are like pretty innocent. <laughs> yeah honestly um there there were definitely some things that i liked about this i, I mean mm-hmm. I'll, I'll start with the positives because I'm, I'm i'm feeling a little bit that maybe you didn't like love this a ton <laughs> um, me no but um i didn't i didn't hate it either i don't know it's uh it's it, i'm i'm excited to have a, a discussion bag, i would say that's what i'm that's what i'm feeling <clears throat> and i'm i'm definitely excited to talk about it because you know because I do love the book and I still have like stuff to say about it. Um, yeah. But I, uh, between you guys, uh, just okay. to say, I, I read the book in ninth grade, but I've mm-hmm. not read it since. So that was 1990. I have no idea. Three, four. I have no idea. <laughs> so we're talking 30 years ago. I can't mm-hmm. remember the book. I, I remember basic plot details, but I don't remember the writing or anything else as far as i understand this movie follows the book very closely mm-hmm. is that true or not it seems like even the the beginning and the ending is the same is that true or not i don't, I don't mostly remember, but i think it is that that's that's the thing and and like this is that's kind of what i came away with with this is that like there are bits and especially like multiple scenes in a row where I'm like I'm like I'm pretty sure this is like exactly like almost beat for beat maybe line for line I don't know I'm sure there's some slight changes here and there I don't know the book verbatim uh but it really does feel like they're just kind of going like down the line like it's not a very long book it's you could read it in like a day or two easy um it's uh despite the content it's it's like a very easy quick read um and but that was also like kind of my issue is that like it 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 
does as far as an adaptation it's like pretty exact for the most part there's maybe some like little things they they change around um simon doesn't actually talk to the lord of the flies like he does in the book he actually the 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 pigs had like speaks to him um and it's just there's when this is why i i i'm i'm a big fan of adaptations that uh exercise more like creative liberty um where you take like a book or source material i'm trying to think of something off the top of my head of course i can't think of anything (laughs) maybe like the Watchmen tv series i guess as opposed to the movie maybe that's a bad example because i do like the movie too (laughs) but the Watchmen (laughs) tv series like uses the the books as a basis to tell like a complete same characters in the same world but a pretty original story uh and it's great, and I love I love when stuff uses the source material to enhance something new rather than just do the exact same story because then that that makes me – like I can watch the Watchmen show and I can be like, oh, I love this show, and I also love the book, and they're two separate yeah. things. They're two separate ways to enjoy this this world and this mythos and whatever – and when you do like an exact adaptation like this, it only makes me think of the book, and that's what makes me think like, oh yeah, the book, the book is better. The books, yeah, I, I like this about the book. Or like, oh, you know, like Battle Royale or Akira. Those are good ones that change the book while telling the same story, but they change the book yeah. enough to where you can appreciate each thing on their own, and you don't have to be like oh but it does this different it does this different and yeah reading the book lord of the flies you you i feel like i feel the the dread and the despair and the evil so much more than just watching this and that can come from elements of like some of the acting not being great and just them not willing to go to the extremes that the book goes to like some of the 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 imagery in in the book and just how grim it gets and and the golding's like i don't know just the way that he describes some of the stuff is just it's it it just kind of puts a shadow over your mind and well yeah it's it's like with a book you're reading exposition essentially yeah and, and, and with a movie with like so children cool. actors that are limited in their ability to really like convey those ideas especially like looking at the imdb trivia over here it says that like once filming began he dispensed with the script and encouraged the young cast to improvise Oof. and so they shot like 60 hours of footage for this and then edited it down to like the 90 minute movie wow. but i think i think they he just said okay this is this is it, it's like <laughs> like a Judd Apatow movie. He just like <laughs> threw him into a scene and said, "This is the general idea. We're just gonna film till we get something, and then basically we'll put it together later." Yeah, I definitely got that feeling. Like when there's stuff where they're like around the campfire and they're all just like kind of partying. I was like, "This feels like kids. Like the kids are just like being kids yeah. and doing kid stuff." Um, yeah, it never like I never felt as I never felt like they were as on the ropes or like as you know like the reason that simon ends up the way that he does that he talks to the the pig's head and then he wanders out onto the thing and sure he sees the the pilot that they think is the beast or whatever but like it the way he le- he gets led up to that point because he's basically like uh going through like dehydration um and like he's kind of losing his like sense of focus so he's kind of like falling out of in and out of like lucidity more or less. So he's like kind of losing it because of like malnutrition and probably just the climate and everything. So there's a lot more that you like get a sense of that just makes it feel worse. And you just feel like their situation is so much worse where in in this, it doesn't, I never feel like they're that miserable, I guess, (laughs) except, you know, when people are like starting to actually like get killed off. Sure. I guess. I I think we ought to climb the mountain. What's the use? What else is there to do? 
I thought his he, he I I would say that in those scenes with with that kid, I think he did a pretty good job of like looking like he was like disassociating okay. the way that like they kind of like he stared at the pig's head and then they got like those really really super close ups of mm-hmm. like the flies crawling over the pig's like nose and the teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. Again, it's not gonna compare to like text on a page. Mm-hmm. So it's it's uh, yeah. I think kind of like reading like ba- like based on what you're what you're talking about. I think for me, like I feel like the scene that does sort of capture that that darkness and that maybe not dread, but just like that that sense of impending like societal collapse. And I think it was probably one of the <clears throat> cooler scenes in the movie was like the big campfire scene when they're all like when their bodies are all painted Mm -hmm. and they're just like whooping and hollering and running around and the one kid just they're all running by the campfire grabbing sticks on fire Mm -hmm. and just hucking them into the water and i feel like he gets really close on some of the kids and they're just like in the camera just like just just going ape shit Mm -hmm. i think that's probably the closest you're gonna get to like that maybe that that feeling that Mm -hmm. you're talking about because otherwise it does seem like they're just like this is awesome i get to put a big (laughs) rock off the side of a cliff it's like that's that's like a a a meme online that it's like if you take your boyfriend to to a lake or a big body of water he's gonna find a rock and throw it into the (laughs) lake and like as soon as those kids saw a big rock on a hill i was like they're gonna push it down because of course they are because they're boys and that's what we do we see a big (laughs) rock we push it and then of course that pairs with the big rock that's that gets pushed to a terminal end later on in the movie but i just i as soon as they pushed it i was like yep this boys left to their own devices this is what they're gonna do they're gonna find (laughs) big shit to push off the mountain maybe maybe that's the actual thesis from (laughs) golden The anti Sisyphus pushing this thing up a hill sucks. Let's push it on top of that kid instead. That's way easier. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> um, but I guess what I I feel like I I kind of took over for a few minutes there. So what do you guys got anything like any sort of I don't know any bits or that. <laughs> kind of peaked uh peaked interest or any um i don't know any other scenes i did like some of the imagery and like they do it does look cool when the kids are like painted up there's like that's even the name of a of like one of the chapters it's like it's like oh shit what is it but but i i like instantly thought of it it's a uh, painted faces and long hair and I mean, I like, I thought of that when there's like, I don't know, there's a shot of like maybe Jack where he's kind of looking like profile and he has his weird, like leaf mask hat thing on yeah and like the white paint down his body. It's interesting. It's, I saw this on Wikipedia too, that while we're talking, it's 60 hours of bit, which it did feel like a disjointed attempt at a documentary with child actors that were imitating hmm. characters and that I don't know what to do with that it feel, that does feel hammy or ridiculous to some extent mm-hmm. then you do the documentary feel somewhat but these are still most of the shots are pretty artistic and I'm not sure I, I, I don't quite understand the whole all of these different uh, little choices that add up to the mise en scene, you know the, the aesthetic vibe of this movie, but I did feel like the one part I really appreciated was the idea that the ghosts and spirits, which mm-hmm. I'm assuming in the book, I, I can't remember it as I said, in the book, like the kids are obviously going quote unquote savage, mm-hmm. and so they're becoming more superstitious, and their belief in ghosts and spirits is absurd and piggy is sort of a rationalist who says no they don't really exist Mm -hmm. i'm assuming the book upholds that view i don't know though but in the movie i feel like we the ghosts and spirits do exist because it's the audience like we are the ones who are supposed to be looking at these kids and Mm -hmm. they can somehow they can somehow sense us 
<laughs> which I think is the idea here, uh, an idea with some of these choices. And I thought that was pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> as as I like if I was, uh, as if that was actually affirming their superstition. And I was supposed to, I don't know what I was supposed to do there. Am I supposed to intervene? <laughs> no, I can't. But as a ghost or spirit, um, acknowledging the camera as such, I, I don't know what to do with it beyond that because I haven't thought it through very much. I just thought that was maybe the the medium difference between the book and then the movie choices. I like that uh, idea, here. definitely. Which there's a yeah. lot of fourth wall breaks, you know, a lot of kids staring at the camera. That's uh -huh. the next to last shot of, of the main character staring at the camera. So I don't. Oh sure, yeah. I, I don't know though. So yeah. then it then it felt like a horror movie to me. I mean, it, certainly the last act is in a, in a lot of ways an attempt at the horrors of humanity but like also the idea that there could be something beyond a transcendent demon or what a big big lord of the flies kind of thing um that uh then then it was a horror legitimate horror movie to an extent but i don't know that it worked for a lot of people because by that point then the kids bad acting <laughs> really annoyed i mean according to the internet you know the ratings of this movie are pretty low so I'm, I'm assuming most people don't see it that way. It, it de I, I notice. I, I feel like it, it really depends on, like, what source you're looking at. I feel like there's some where this is, like, you could look at some website and it's, like, critically acclaimed. And then there's oh. some where it's, like, not. So it's so I feel like it's all over the, the place depending on what, uh, what source you're going at, which also kind of makes it interesting. There's not, like, a – I feel like there's not a, a set, like, general – like consensus for you know is this a you know a good movie or a a bad movie or i mean i don't think it's a bad movie by any means i don't i don't think that it's just my, my main complaint is that i just i just more and i and it's just that i hate doing this for the most i hate comparing adaptations to the source material in this way but it's like again when it's so close it's hard for me not to and, and that's what that's what bummed me out i really wanted to just kind of appreciate this more for what it is and i and i did like i said there like i liked a fair amount of the cinematography um i did like some of the moments what i was gonna say about some of the oh i noted that that like while the acting itself wasn't you know the best <laughs> all the time even like from like within like an actor like sometimes i would see a scene and, and with piggy and i'd be like man this kid's like really bad and then i'd see another scene I'm like oh he's <laughs> he's doing he's doing good here so it's really like scene to scene um and a a shot that i noted in particular where i'm like i'm like this might be more a a director issue than an mm. actor issue in particular is there's the part where it's all the choir boys introducing themselves and it's like the camera just kind of like goes down a line and they're like, I'm Percy, I'm Henry. I'm the, and like, it's really awkward in a way it where is. like, it's like the kids aren't like paying attention and you can imagine like the director like going like, hey, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, like someone it's your line. Is like it's your line. It's to each one to say what their <laughs> name is. Cause there's, there's like a part, like a part in particular where it goes to a kid and he's, sitting there just kind of staring off screen like this for a good few seconds and it's hanging on him and then he just goes Rupert. Harold. and it just keeps moving I'm like is it, is it more like no. the the director like some people don't know how to direct kids or whatever um right but what i will well, give it is i think the casting itself Again, acting besides the point, but like the look and everything of the characters is pretty on point. Like I don't like they all fit their book like, you know, kind of like what you picture in your head, like how they sound and move and look pretty pretty good. I I uh I really really think that they they kind of nailed that for basically mm. everybody like piggy is like spot on simon is sp e exactly how he's how like you know at least in my subjective <laughs> you know viewpoint i'm like i think they they kind of nailed it there i think the he director and editor can get over bad acting so i 
you're probably right about that. I, I tried to do a thought experiment. I can't really... I don't know what my answer would be. If you put the Goonies cast in here, just to think of a movie with some <laughs> child actors who might have some chops. I don't even know the Goonies really has it, but... You got Chunk? Stand by me. Piggy? There Stand you go. by me. <laughs> Stand by me. I don't know. Pick your favorite you know, mo- movie where the bulk of the acting is from kids. You know, right. Would this movie be better? But I think so much of it is is the you're right the director yeah. who's using faces and and a sequence of faces to tell a story and faces mm-hmm. in certain positions and and having certain looks on them yeah so i'm not sure that the acting really would a better acting would help yeah i, I mean Pig, Pig, piggy at times might have been better cast <laughs> yeah i i can't say it would I would think that it would help, but if it was at the service of casting different kids, like, I like that, um, like, you don't know these, they they didn't grow up to be, like, famous actors, so they're not, like, that That would be the back, the, or the, the, whatever, the, the bad, I, 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 when we're recording, I, easy simple phrases that i use all the time just just go from my mind and i can't think of it the the negative side effect i guess is the way to put it of like casting better actors like you said stand by me like river phoenix he's a pretty good actor he could probably do a really good job as a as like ralph or roger maybe um but it's like you'd be watching it and you're like that's river phoenix that's sean astin you know, you're, you're, I feel like yeah. that would kind of go above just like, you know, it's Ralph, it's Piggy, it's Simon, it's Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and maybe, maybe that also helps as to like why I, I think the, the casting is so good is cause like I, I do just see them as these parts, even when, you know, maybe, maybe some of their delivery isn't the, isn't the best. <laughs> Have it. So Nick, you said you, you didn't, you hadn't seen any or know like about this or whatever. I or like you you hadn't seen you didn't know the story or whatever prior to this which is weird i, I guess I, I i roughly knew that it was like kids on an island and they eventually like basically turn turn savage um okay. i didn't i didn't know that it was kind of like a um a, a like a commentary on like society at at, at large like you know it, it it seems like that uh that idea where like you know uh, it's like a social experiment where if like someone is on top of a building and they're like about to commit suicide by jumping off of it, if a crowd gathers and like a couple people start shouting jump, you can essentially like <laughs> convince everyone else yeah. to like join in on it. And that seems to be kind of like the thesis of this where it's like yeah. they start trying to do this like societal thing. But then <clears throat> I, d- I did like the juxtaposition of like the literal choir boys becoming like the most unhinged yeah. crazy <laughs> people like they you, you meet them at the beginning of the movie and they're essentially all perfectly in line all in sync like mm-hmm. singing their song like all it's like they're on an island on a t- tropical island i think you know mm-hmm. and they're still wearing like their hats and their full i know clothes. yeah and i'm like th- they are the most like society pilled of everybody they they're like we must maintain decorum because we are choir boys or we're we're englishmen and then you mm-hmm. know the kids are like yeah england rocks woo yeah. <laughs> yeah because england is the uh, best or whatever <laughs> yeah exactly um so so I, I i did know that element um and then i i knew about piggy which piggy is such a tragic character i feel i feel bad for the kid yeah. But also, sometimes I feel like he kind of steps on the rake and hits himself in the face. <laughs> For one, you don't <laughs> tell someone the nickname that you hate right and off don't the bat. Want people to call you. Yeah. Maybe in maybe you know in his his mind he's like, oh okay, well he'll know that he can trust me because I'm revealing something about myself. So that way he'll know that I'm like authentic or like I'm I'm a I'm a good person because because I'm honest and forthright you know whatever mm-hmm. and you know and then it, it backfires on him immediately his one friend like 
the one kid who has his back the entire movie is also the first one to tell everyone that yeah. call him Piggy, you know? <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he, he reminds me of uh, a character from the TV show Louie, like Louis C.K.'s show that he did. Mm-hmm. Um, there was an episode where he has to, like, babysit one of his daughter's friends from school, and it's this kid named Never. <laughs> and he's like... Oh, <laughs> He's a little chubby kid. He he looks exactly like a like a piggy from this movie. Mm. And he like he shows up to Louie's house and he's like, "My mom says I can't eat anything that has carbon in it." <laughs> and, 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 and Louis's like, uh, uh, "What?" And then he looks through the fridge and then the the kid grabs like a, a a bowl of ground beef and he's like, "I can eat this." And it's just like raw meat. <laughs> mm. And and there's like this part where where eventually like Louie gets kind of fed up with him and uh he never says something is like well my mom says that I can't do this and he's like your mom is wrong <laughs> and he's like I'm going to tell her you said that and he's like yeah do it please do <laughs> but that's like the kid that he reminded me of just like this sort of outcast kid uh but I was like oh that's that's never that's a little piggy <laughs> So mm. I, I felt sympathy for him, but also there was like that weird moment where he, I feel like he tried to justify everything that they did. But like after killing Simon, yeah. it felt like a weird, weird heel turn for Piggy where he was like defending the kids for killing him. He's like, they didn't know. They didn't know he was. They were, you know, crazy. They were out of their mind. It was dark. I'm like, why are you defending these guys? I th- mm. I think in that moment he was doing that more for for ralph like self-preservation oh for ralph because i don't i don't know if it's explicitly clear in the movie but in the book it is that it's made clear that ralph also partakes in the killing of simon so ralph is also in that oh so he's like complicit so i so i think that's piggy trying to make ralph feel better Right. Basically. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't think he gives a shit about like Jack or Roger or those guys. Okay. 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 Um, I gotcha. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, the, I guess the reason I asked, I, I was mainly just wondering if you or, or Josh, if you had, had seen the, uh, there's another version of this from 1990 that is like substantially worse. Like this is like a good for like an adaptation, but that like it changes some like core fundamentals that I think just kind of ruin the whole point. <laughs> um, I remember it coming out. I see. I don't. In my ninth grade class, something was shown, but I cannot remember. Oh, okay. maybe just clips. I can't imagine the nineteen ninety version was shown, but it it could be parts of it were. Maybe. I know that they, it was it was American. Yeah. I mean, the kids were American in 1990. But also, it was like, my vague memory, I could be wrong, is con- it was controversial, and I don't remember why. It, it, people just didn't like it because it was too grisly. It was a li- it's uh, a little maybe. more violent. Yeah. There's also, like, the kids swear like sailors throughout the movie. Oh. And, and they're all... The the school that they're a part of is like a military like correctional facility for like juvenile delinquents or whatever. So it's like you're kind of ruining the the point where it's like, you know, the idea is that like, you know, it's these boys. it's these prim they're, and they're proper English with, school yeah. boys, but you're already mm-hmm. setting them up to be like, not that you know you know once a criminal always a criminal and there's no you know it's all black and white and sure there's uh uh there's there can be more nuance to it but it really feels like such a like yeah like a miss miss misinterpretation of the of the entire like story (laughs) it's weird yeah the, the 60s movie the thesis is like this can happen to anybody if left to their own devices even like posh school children will descend yeah. into like you know barbarism and madness if left unattended and then and then yeah that one's just like a bunch of juvenile kids land on an island and uh well you probably can guess what happens next because like 
yeah it's already it's teed up to just yeah that's missing the entire point mm. of of the story which like do you do you agree with that thesis also like the 1963 adaptation like the original novel that just like that, that i don't know it, it seems like a pretty um it's pretty like nihilistic cynical world yeah, cynical, yeah, yeah of just like you know anybody if if like left on a desert island like like if you have to reform society with a group of of people that you don't know because mm-hmm. i because like i was thinking about that the entire time when they're like well i should be the leader well i should be the leader well we should put it to a vote but then it's like well there's more kids that are on this guy's side than there mm-hmm. are the choir boys so ralph gets ralph gets to be the leader but it's only because there are more of them than there are the, the choir boys but i i was thinking about that the entire time just like like you know how would you delegate who is the leader is it just the person who's the loudest i mean i guess this is like lost <laughs> like that, that's yeah, kind of that's kind of like the, the one who's the tallest i mean that, yeah, I, yeah the tallest and the skinniest and it's, yeah. yeah no exact because like i mean that's kind of like the the one of the th- things that happens in the show lost is like is it jack or is it sawyer who are like kind of calling the shots there's like kind of a power struggle for like the direction of how everybody should right, act and yeah. how everybody should should do things and like well should we focus on survival or should we focus on trying to get off the island and like by the end of the of the movie uh the other kids seem very content with just staying on the island and like becoming like 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 uh you know like the north sentinel island off of india where it's like an uncontacted tribe and anyone who gets like close just gets a barrage of arrows and is killed instantly <laughs> uh um fuck i forgot what i was gonna say there the, it's kind of a heady oh. question if you I well, know, I about think, like that. i think it's you could take it as a universal everybody everywhere this is what happened i think i i like it as a this is what kids in the 60s would do. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, and, and so this is the, this is like doving, dovetailing into Clockwork Orange. Like these kids would grow to be Alex. And, uh, and the uh, that, that sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, in, the uneducated or left to their own devices uh, kids these days. Is an, that's another way to take this movie. And there's sort of a battle between you know, English boarding school you think about pink floyd the wall you know it's like railing against such a hard legalistic education but this movie you could see it the opposite way where it's like these kids need to have this law and order system (laughs) they need to go to the meat grinder (laughs) (laughs) yeah we don't need no education yes you do yeah (laughs) Yeah, right So I, th- I think the way that I look at it is like, I think that it's, I like to think that it, it's possible that this could happen. I don't know if I agree that it's just like, you know, this is the inevitable outcome no matter what. But I will say if this is going to happen, middle school boys is the ones who are, it's like most <laughs> yes. likely going to happen to for sure. Even if they are, you know, British boarding school boys. They are the most psychotic, like, <laughs> uh, s- like human specimens <laughs> of like any age and like breakdown, or whatever. Like you want, you want to go for so, you know. Yeah, I yeah, I would say that yeah, it, it's more of an indictment of like what kids would do because like there are plenty of stories that would totally like contradict like this thesis. Like I, I think of like the the guys in the Andes, which. Oh yeah, yes, sure. they they did. Uh, you know, they had to eat a couple people that had already died. But that was but, for strictly for survival. Yeah, and it was yeah, and they didn't kill anybody. It was just exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it's like they they probably figured. You know, I think like in that in that situation, like just like natural leadership just kind of happens. Like someone just kind of takes charge, and other mm-hmm. people are like, "Yeah, I like I like what this guy's." doing uh, this this is good this seems like a good idea yeah. yeah middle school boys oh <laughs> there is there is again in the book there there is a lot more like the boys um everybody 
like buys more into their shared mythos like you said like the beast like it's just it's a thing for them to be scared of but they all like believe in it or like and and the thing that determines the leader is because it's it, ralph had the conch shell and he brought everybody together with the conch shell and then like the conch shell kind of takes on its own like meaning in the book where it's kind of like this holy object sort of thing for them mm. um and they don't like ha- hammer into it too much but there's a whole thing of like whoever has the conch is like they they're the ones that speak and um and then but eventually as it you know their society starts to break down it's like that becomes less and less important and then it literally turns to like tribalism like like think of like like wild like pack animals it's literally who's the who's who's the who's the top dog who's the alpha it's just so it it turns out to be jack <laughs> he it, yeah. it, at at a certain point it probably is because he's bigger and taller and stronger than ralph i think that's what it kind of degrades to yeah i i i, I did get that vibe from the conch shell like i i feel like that could have been done a little bit better to give it more weight like you know I'm speaking but it's like because they're filming with like children who are not really like trained actors you don't you don't really get that vibe of like reverence for it because Mm -hmm. the kids are just kind of like tittering and talking Mm -hmm. to each other like they're Mm -hmm. fidgety anyway Mm -hmm. so it's again I feel like in the book there's probably more of like a mystique and a majesty to it because it's it's kind of like um like i don't know if you want to like you know beginning of a society that's probably like religion or something like that like that's sort of like we don't know why yeah this thing (laughs) this thing is like magical and compels us to do this but we have to put our faith in something because otherwise the alternative is painting our faces and killing pigs and stabbing each other yeah you know (laughs) And it's like, yeah, you don't really get that across. I do like at the end when like they're literally on like the, the, the face of a mountain, like a a cliffside and Piggy's like, you listen to me. I've got the shell and everyone's just like, yeah, (laughs) they just, just boo, like shut up. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, ah, Piggy, he's still, he's still, he's a true believer. He's the last. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I think that is like what it what it is, especially with the uh, the the beast and all that. Because if if you remember, like how that is started, like that rumor or whatever, is like it's literally the it might be Percy, the one kid who he doesn't say much, but he's the one who like when they first land on the island, he's like, "Who are you?" and he's like, "Percival Ace, blah blah blah," da, da, and he's like telephone 604 blah 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 yeah, and then yeah. like they have him come up again and he can't remember the number and um but i think it's him who like whispers to ralph or something like there's a a beast on the island i saw him so it's just like a kid probably saw a shadow in the dark and he's a little kid yeah. so he he had they have big imagination so he thought of something but because this kid like whispered like i saw this thing and then he's like Oh, he saw there's he saw a beast in the island, and then it becomes like fact, just like that. Like everybody's like, okay, right. I guess we gotta arm ourselves against the the beast. Like that's that's literally like what Jack's whole like mantra becomes after a while is like it instead instead of like we're gonna have rules because we're British and England is the best and we have law and order, and it devolves into l- like literally him saying, I'm going to protect you because I got you meat and i'm gonna kill the beast if it comes to us that's all we need to worry about now is eating and killing the beast (laughs) and it works (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna cut this pig's head off and put it on a pike and offer it to the beast and everyone's just like (laughs) yeah it makes sense to me yeah (laughs) i love that that was another line that like i remembered like by heart the like when Ralph goes back after, I think after they kill Piggy and Sam, Sam Narek says, they say, uh, Jack's sharpening a stick at both ends. And you're like, Jesus Christ. That's like, it's like really grim. Mm. Like, damn. Like it's actually like coming to this point where, you know, they, they, they killed Simon 
on accident, more or less. It was a frenzy, a mob thing. It was dark, all this, you know, whatever excuses you want to make. And then the uh, Roger kills Piggy by, I guess, manslaughter, you know pushes a rock off and he's like oh was it? oh you know i didn't mean you know i i was just supposed to scare him or whatever but it's like it's this ramping up of like that's there's like fewer excuses or it's like more deliberate until like now we're going to hunt him down and cut his head off and stick mm-hmm. it on a spike because <laughs> he's not part of our group basically like mm-hmm. what is ralph gonna do to them at that point is he is he a threat no he's just an other yeah, they just that's and that's like uh I mean that's like <clears throat> how serial killers work is like that sort of escalation of of mm. of of acts and just kind of like justifying it to yourself like like yeah, I don't know, it was dark. We we were afraid of the beast. He came out of the woods, he mm. surprised us. He he shouldn't have come out of the woods and surprised us. Like he shouldn't <laughs> have done that. Like he, like he, mm. you know, it was an accident. We didn't mean to, but he shouldn't have done that. And then it's just like this kid's pissing me off. I'm going to push this rock to scare him. Oh, he's he's dead. Oh, something flipped in my brain. I'm going to like kill this kid now. Like this <laughs> it, it it you know becomes justified in the end. Yeah. Or they yeah, they they find more and more ways to justify this stuff or more yeah, more workarounds, more loophole or whatever, you know, what have you. More yeah. Yeah. Excuses. Mm-hmm. Um, I do very briefly want to talk about the the cinematography because I do think that there were a few things in this movie that um, I thought were really interesting and, and, and kind of neat. I think some of the scenes with like the blocking were, were cool. There was like a shot, I think, uh, when the kids, when, when uh, 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 Ralph's group, like they build the fire and then you hear... Um, Simon, not Simon, uh, Jack's group after they've killed the pig and they're kind of like singing their song about like, you know, kill the pig, smash the day, you know, whatever that song is. I feel like there was like almost like a, like a high and low, like Kurosawa, just like one kid up here, one kid up there, one kid up there, one kid up there. Like they're all perfectly spaced, but it's like the way that it looks was, I I thought it was cool. Mm. I, I liked some of the blocking and there was one shot where, I don't know like what kind of lens that they used, but it was like a shot of Jack before it was kind of like before he's like totally, totally insane. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it's like, they're all kind of having like a a, a meeting and he's like holding his spike and the, the Boca I think is what it would be called. It's like, it's almost like a fisheye lens. Like it's circular and like all of the leaves and the sunlight behind him are totally like, it it has such a bizarre. Why do I not remember the shot? It sounds very vi- like hmm. very cool, and um, <laughs> but I like don't remember that shot for some reason. Uh, I'll see if is I it really quick. Did I like? It. Was that maybe I was taking a note or something like that? Um, um I'll see if I can find it. But yeah, it, it was it was like a super like um, not like a rack focus, but like a shallow depth of field. Okay, but everything behind him was like really out of focus shimmering and yeah uh-huh. yeah cool. yeah mm. it sounds cool <laughs> um got were you gonna say something Jeff? yeah i i well, my thought experiment here is if you gave this to the top thousand directors in the world right now what what would happen this is the lord of the flies i don't think it would look anything like this movie it just i don't it's movies of its time which mm-hmm. is good or bad but i think some of the things you're talking about there you'd have a moving camera you'd have obviously not four by three probably not black and white i don't know you know so there's and and i also think they might have scenes before and after the island and and all there was was the photo oh i hope not i think they would though i think maybe so i think studios would want that you know for for clarity or something or or resolution uh at the end which I... i think i think some of these shots are are pretty um, aesthetically interesting as far as like where they're putting the kids and why, mm-hmm. but it also feels disjointed between shots to me. So it, it's not a style that would be done this I, today by hardly anybody. I think 
Mm. Um, I think. Yeah, I don't know. I it it does have a kind of an interesting style. I like the like the opening credits with like that like that music and then like yeah. the like you know explosion sound like how that's kind of done is really really neat um yeah it's like a like a right that they would like do a before and after yeah that would be awful <laughs> <laughs> well you know when they you get to the end and it's just the captain and i don't think any words are said are there there might be one but no, I think even have no. Some I think he just like there. pats his head. I don't think there is yeah. in the book either. I think it's literally just like they show up and maybe maybe they say something in the book, but it's like it ends with like all of the kids like like sobbing, and it it kind of the book kind of like they you know the book kind of progressively describes them less and less as children and more and more as like savage animals. And then it's, like, mm-hmm. in that ending scene when they see, like, an adult, they see authority, they see society returning. It, like, the book instantly reverts them back into, like, children. And they're just, like, crying on the beach or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily get it from the movie itself. But reading, like, a synopsis and kind of, you know, doing a little bit of, like, reading about it. I guess at the end, the kid the kid that initially goes up to like the sailor that they first meet he's like trying to talk and and i think he's from what i read it's like he's trying to introduce himself or like say his name i think but it's like, that kid again the the telephone but he for, kid he forgot his name <laughs> yeah because like they've all, they've basically oh. lost all yeah. sense of identity and self in this like this barbarism that they've the you know they've started to engage in I, I am look I I guess I was wrong about the, the end of the book. I was right about like the whole like the end end, but they they do they have like a he has like a full on conversation with the guy I guess, but he's like very like short about it. He's like he's like well, we saw your smoke. What have you been doing? Having a war or something? Ralph nodded. Nobody killed I hope. Any dead bodies? Only two, <laughs> and they've gone. Two killed. Uh. And then. I don't know. He he's just very. He's like, we'll take you off. How many of you are there? Who's boss here? He's just very like straight and to the point. Mm. <laughs> yeah. and then he he's like, uh, you're all British. You're all you're British boys. You're all British, aren't you? Would have been able to put up a better show than that. And then Ralph says, it was like that at first. Before things, he stopped. We were together then. The n- officer nodded helpfully. I know, jolly good show, like the Coral Island. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's yeah. that's wild. So, yeah, the officer just like, all right, yeah. cool, sure, kids, you you silly kids who are probably like emaciated and like, yeah, really fucked up. <clears throat> um. Uh oh, you said uh, modern directors. I not saying that he'll he'll do it this way, but I do remember seeing. I don't remember where I saw this, but uh, Luca Guadagnino is apparently doing an adaptation of this and that is promising to me i think he he has such a varied film catalog but i think he could pull it off i think he could do something pretty cool um even though like what else has he done i'm not familiar with him uh, Call Me By Your Name, I think, is his most famous movie. But oh. he did the... I mentioned him before because he did the Suspiria remake. That's, That's right. That's pretty solid. Didn't he just do something? Did he do Challengers? He just did Challengers, and that movie okay. rules. But that's what I mean. Like, okay. all three of those movies, wildly different. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I think I think it could be cool. I, I'm, no, you gotta I'm get the guy intrigued. from Brawl and Cell Block 99 to do it. Oh shit, that'd be cool. <laughs> it's oh, like no. super brutal. Oh gosh. <laughs> 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 they they do Vince the... Vaughn. Vince Vaughn is the sailor at the end, and he's like, "Come on, kids, you can <laughs> you can boost these numbers." <laughs> yeah. Uh. <clears throat> yes, I don't know. It, it it definitely wouldn't be like in this style or whatever. But uh, but I think he could I think he could do something cool cool with it. I think it could be interesting. Not all of his movies are like home runs for me by any means, but I 
he's got an interesting enough like style to me that that uh, I'm definitely intrigued. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I think you would definitely have to do sort of similar to like what this did because I think I think if they had like started like showing the kids in school at first and like kind of giving us mm-hmm. any information about because it's like who they are outside of the island like almost doesn't matter right yeah you know i don't know if the book does that at all i don't know if the book starts with like no it just throws them right on into it it starts with it's it starts with him on the beach with ralph on the beach and he meets piggy and then they meet up with the other people and then it ends with the officer on the beach okay Mm. uh yeah and like uh, again it's it's a very like philosophical book like i don't they're more just like they're figureheads of like philosophy or whatever than they are characters themselves you know it's like piggy is logic and reason uh jack is uh like primal ambition and ralph is somewhere in between you know they they all represent these different kind of facets of humanity i guess and they're they're more that than like these kids from Camberley. Although that was one of my favorite scenes of the movie, I loved when the boys <laughs> went out to hunt, and then you get you cut back to Piggy, who's got to like babysit the little ones, and he's like, "I'm from a town called Camberley. It used to be called Cambridgeshire, but they had to change it because of Cambridge. But they left the cam because." And then and he just like goes through like in great detail. I thought that was hilarious and that's the story of where i came from and it's like yeah cool story dude and you re- you're like oh man that's why everybody picks on big <laughs> <laughs> and they and burr is a river and there are a lot of rivers around there can burr. and then lee because a lot of the towns near there ended with lee their names end with, ended with Lee, so, so they called it Camberley, Camberley, and that's the true story of Camberley. Wait, what happens in this segment? I forget. We just oh, kind of just kind of like score out of ten, and then just kind of give like oh, final right. yeah, yeah, final yeah. thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um. Uh, yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Just go. Ahead. You want to go first? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I was kind of torn between like a five and a six. I think I want to go with six. Uh, there were some some neat things that they did in this movie with the camera, and uh, I, I, I appreciated that. Uh, I think there were moments that were, you know, capturing, th- I think, the like the thesis of the book and like the ideas about like, you know, what, what these kids resort to. Uh, but overall... Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that it, it, it sort of felt like a documentary because there are definitely some shots in the way that it's framed where it doesn't, yeah, like it, it, it doesn't feel like a, like a cinematic thing so that when those cinematic moments do happen, you're almost like, whoa, like that's <laughs> interesting because it's, it's usually just kind of static and very like mm. basic a lot sure, of the yeah. times. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> you know when those moments did happen i did you know sort of take note and be like okay that's a cool shot that's a cool scene i i I like the way they did that uh but yeah overall uh i mean the the kid acting kind of takes it down a peg for me and um i don't know i i feel like this would have been better as like a mini series or something like that you know like like Mm. like it it sort of felt like a mini series especially with the sort of like you know mid acting from from these kids that you know i mean i think the only uh the the kid who played ralph went on to be like an actor everyone else like this is like their sole credit Mm. so you know they know you know there was like a you know there's like an imdb fact that's just like most of these well like one kid went on to be an engineer one kid went on to be a school Mm. teacher but like none of them really pursued acting beyond this it's like the end of the sandlot or like break sound like oh <laughs> everybody went off because <laughs> only one uh, of them continued playing baseball mm. right <laughs> um so yeah i don't know I, I think it was it was it was mostly fine i didn't like love it but there were some some cool things some interesting things that kind of 
kept it above just like mediocre boring i guess mm-hmm. so <laughs> six yeah i'm i'm right there i think i'm i settled on a six as well but it was like it was definitely like a high five low six sort of sort of deal um where like I would I almost would have just went like straight five because I'm like well it's it's an adaptation it does the job and that's all it need that's all it is but I was like I don't know do I chalk that up to just you know the source material because like I do like like the story um that like I'm a little more engaged than I would be with just a straight up just boring adaptation um because I don't know it's not boring uh, and but I think I think why I settled on going like above that average is because I do think that there's enough, you know, cool cinematography or just cool elements to it. Um, I I didn't mean to like shit on the entire thing when I was saying that it was inferior. It's like it can be inferior but still like work in some some moments. Like I I also like this the campfire scene with like the way that they shoot, like the murder of Simon is, that's pretty good and like pretty effective like how they how how that's done um casting dude the shot of him floating in the water and then like turning over and floating away was yeah like, Ugh. yeah Ooh. um that's a that's another i remember like in the book it's like when they're killing him in the book it never says that it's simon it just says like the beast came out of the woods and they attacked and the beast crawled on all fours and tried to escape and it was screaming and blah 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 and then like it kind of does like the whole aftermath and then at the end it talks about like the bubbly white waves taking simon's body away i i I distinctly remember that like that so that again like that whole scene is pretty pretty good um and then again, like the casting, I think pull, pulls a lot, and it kind of makes up for some of the the issues I have with with the acting here and there. Um, the I, I I like the sense of space. I never really talked about that that you get on the island. I think it's a pre- you get a pretty a fairly good idea of relatively where stuff is on the island, you know. And I appreciate that in a movie. I like knowing where I'm at and where this other thing is, you know, and how you get to it and all that. Sometimes you just kind of cut around that and you're just like, you have just a kind of a disjointed like bunch of locations, but I think they did a good job. Um, and yeah, cinematography is good. I like, there, there's this cool like charcoal-y, charoscuri look to some of the like, the grays in the black and whites that there's a shot in particular of Ralph. I can't particularly remember where it is, but it's him up against just like shadow. And it reminds me, it reminded me of that shot from Carnival of Souls that I love of the close up of the girl as she's like staring out at the pier. It's like near the end of it. Um, and it's just like this close up over and it just, it just looks really cool. And it's just, there's, there's, a, there's this, I love when like black and white movies just, they pop like that and they just look so nice. <laughs> and, and there was a, there was a few, few shots like that from this. Um, so six. I feel like you guys like this better than you're saying. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I think I'm glad you mentioned Carnival of Souls. It came up for me too as I was thinking about it. It has an indie feel with the. I feel like psychological horror where I am, a, as I said, a ghost, but then uh, the, obviously the character is, and I feel like that's what these kids. Oh are sure, to yeah, extent. ghosts and these kids yeah. Are just, yeah, something eerie about this movie. It's. Pretty for the time, it would be edgy. That's why I feel Carnival of Souls is also kind of that way. But yeah, I, I think I give it a seven. I don't know. It's in the Criterion Collection, but then it's got a low rating on Letterbox. That, that's I, that's yeah. what I'm it's, saying it's, about the like all over the place thing. Yeah, yeah. I I think it could be inspiring to some people, and I think if you read the book like you did, it it's maybe not as I don't know, captivating. I but the the thing that makes it edgy for me is that it's obviously the child deaths, but there's a shot and it's only a quarter second, half second long of of Piggy getting hit with a rock. Mm, it yeah, it just goes by like that. It's very quick. But yeah. just that when would that have been in movies? I don't think three years before it. I got to think about this. I don't think in the fifties it would have been there. Let's put it that way. At what point 
could you have had a kid getting killed? And it's just over. But mm-hmm. I feel like that's a, it's almost a gateway shot to more and more visceral, uh, explicit, terrifying shots or scenes or something like that, which would come out in the '60s more and more, being more more gritty and more. I don't know, realistic in terms of violence. Mm-hmm. I I'm not saying I love that or don't, but uh, <laughs> it, it's a well. And then another movie I think about you may not know it is a prison camp movie called King Rat, which came out about this time. And and these prison camp movies are getting more grittier as well. King this Rat. one involves a British. I think, yeah, King, it's a pretty good movie. Um, okay. Very dark prison camp movie. I mean, they're not like getting along as they're in Great Escape. Um, and trying to, you know, thwart their captors. Okay. It, that that's the flavor of movies at this time. I feel like that are either either about this sort of primal stuff in human nature or war movies. And so, I appreciate that this mo- what this movie is, it what it is because I think even like four years before in movie history, it would just be very difficult for this to be made. And then it's a as I said, the gateway. I think a Kubrick. 2001, the apes beating each other up, and then Clockwork Orange, and I don't know. That's sort of all connecting for me with Lord of the Flies. <laughs> so the more the more I've seen, the more I'm like, oh, this movie, that movie, the other movie, that that kind of connects to this one, and it kind of thrills me more than if I probably have seen it as a freshman in high school, just having read the book. I'd probably not like this movie at all. Yeah. Were there any kid deaths in Night of the Hunter? No, they make it no, out clean. They, just the <laughs> the mom, just the uh, mom. Yeah, <laughs> which is still a pretty like horrifying shot of uh, her in the water. Yeah. I love that. I that's like, it's it's horrifying in the context of the movie, but I still think that's like one of the. I fucking love that shot so much. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. that's another really nice looking <clears throat> black and white movie. Like knows how to use its its shadows and and all that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I did think of two thousand one as well of like the the kids devolving into like apes and just like that sort of like hierarchy. Like I, I started reading the book. I don't, I don't know if you you guys have read that, but uh, because like they wrote oh, uh, Arthur Arthur C. Clarke and like Kubrick kind of wrote the movie and the book like in tandem. Yeah, and uh, the 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 book like kind of goes into like the thought process of like the the main ape who just like the the book describes like he has these feelings but he doesn't know what they are and in fact yeah. won't for millions of years because he's an ape but it's like these little sparks of ideas and there's like a scene where like they they <clears throat> they're like running out of food because like they're like all of the plants and everything are picked dry and then one day he basically learns like wait a minute i can pick up this stick and i can beat that pig to death and we can eat this pig right. And the pig has no reason to fear him because the monkeys have never done it up until this point. So they're like, like, hey, what's up? I'm I'm also eating out here. And then you know, and then it's like they learn and like that, that you know that hierarchy. That it, I yeah, it, it made me think of two thousand one, like oh, yeah. the kids out there just like clobbering that, each other. That that kind of that kind of <clears throat> stuff makes me sad. Like thinking of the the pig not not <laughs> knowing or like that's like yeah. that's I think that's why like this the book kind of stuck with me. Like that that sort of like the loss of innocence is a is a uh, metaphorical like through line that is really affecting to me like catcher in the rise like the same thing to where like i think like holden caulfield is kind of a dumbass but like it it that you know the the main point of that book if either of you have read that is also just like he's just kind of he's like a teenager who's just like pissed off because like he he's sees a middle school boy <laughs> kids becoming adults and it depresses him and i'm like yeah yeah and like my little microcosm of that is like our little kittens who are like really innocent and like having to use the spray bottle on them for the first time <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my little innocent and they like look at me so confused like what is that I should be able to do anything that i want to and i'm like why did you do that and you're like no <laughs> that's my little that's that's where i like i see that and then that's where i paint my face and yeah yeah and go savage (laughs) in in my basement (laughs) well now in post did we anything else we 
watched or consumed or I don't know anything anything else these last couple weeks. Um, I was gonna bring this up on the on the last episode, but we went long because we did a couple movies. Um, but it, it is interesting because uh, I I almost mentioned it earlier when you were talking about like the the different characters in in Lord of the Flies like representing different emotions like like you know or uh, Piggy is or logic yeah um <clears throat> so a game that heavily revolves around oh. that i just played i thought you were gonna um, i you said emotion i thought i i was like you're teeing this up for inside out too right because <laughs> that's literally uh, about no. emotions <laughs> this this game is i've seen memes comparing inside out and this game because they really very similarly uh so i just beat uh, a game called disco elysium which hmm. oh yeah have right. you played that, Josh? I have. Okay, did you like it? I, I am the only person in the world who does not like that game. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, it's like the highest rated game ever. Uh, I, yeah, I adored it. I, I, I <laughs> loved it. Um, be, and, and it's mostly because of that system of like, you have you, you okay so it's like the basic premise of the game is you're like this police officer who is like kind of a, a, a drunken loser type guy and you wake up from like a particularly rough bender and then it's like you 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 don't remember anything about yourself and you learn that you're in town to solve a murder um someone has been hung in like a courtyard behind your hotel there's like a strike going on at the harbor and like basically you have to like simultaneously solve this murder and try to remember who you are and what's interesting about this game is that instead of getting any sort of like you know uh, uh like partners like you know in in like you know rpg games you get like different partners that have different skills and abilities you have basically i think 24 thoughts that kind of dictate how you see the world and how you interact with people depending on like you know what what stats you put them in like there's four categories that are like you know physical objects like introspection like like thinking feeling and then like you know there's this really cool thing called shivers which is like one of the like aspects of the game where it's like if you put skills into that like you can basically talk to the city and like understand the city's history every once in a while you'll just get like you'll get like a cold wind that blows and the game map pulls out and like it'll kind of give you just like you know it's like you see a, a man and his wife arguing at, at this city block and then it, it it's a really neat element of the game that kind of makes it because like the the setting and the story of the game is basically like this guy's D D group that <laughs> he's been he's been crafting this world for like a decade and they finally like kind of turned it into a game but like i think the setting and like some of the characters have basically been like part of their D D game like the, the the you know he just he created all of it and mm -hmm. then they put it into a game and uh <clears throat> there are um there's like definitely like a political slant to it but i mean obviously the game is made by i think people who are like pretty left-leaning I mm -hmm. would I would argue um, but the game kind of like lets you do you know it's like do you want to be an ultra liberal do you want to be like a capitalist do you want to be a fascist or do you want to be a communist okay and <laughs> depending on those choices your thoughts will will kind of guide you there but also like they'll they will like th th they'll make jokes about it so even if you decide to if you decide to be a communist or something like that it'll be like well, it's it's never worked before, but like maybe you can make it happen. Like that, that's, <laughs> that's funny. Like that kind of shit. So it's like it's very tongue in cheek. That's funny. Uh, so like, it, are you saying like if you start to like lean, let's say you're leaning like communist, your suggestions or like your thoughts will start to become that more. Whereas like if you so, were like going more like liberal at that point, you're it would be yeah, steering so you that way. There's another element of the game called like the thought cabinet where okay. basically talking to certain characters will will trigger thoughts and then you can like choose to accept to like internalize a thought and then after X men X many of hours of in-game time progresses you'll like have a breakthrough and then you get you get some stat boosts or 
some you know like you'll get a plus one in this but maybe a minus one in that like there's a character who uh who doesn't want to let you into the harbor because there's a strike going on and his name is Measurehead. And okay. he is literally like a dude like like in terms of like phrenology. Like he's a huge like racist who tells <laughs> you that like he's like your haplo group is weak, like that kind of shit. <laughs> and there are many options to get around him because he's massive, like you can try to fight him or you can internalize his advanced race theory. And then if you, like, <laughs> meet him on his level, he'll let you into the harbor. But nice. your character is a huge racist now. So it's like you kind of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like and and you can like discard thoughts. That's awesome. You know if you don't if you don't like them, I discarded that one very fast because I was like, well, I need to get into the harbor. So I guess I'll do this ironically, maybe. And then like another character will be like, yeah, we saw you being racist earlier, and I was like, shit, it, oh, I, it, it happened. <laughs> but uh, um, but the, the the story itself uh, it takes place over like a few days. But there are like a ton of side characters that you can talk to, a ton of side missions you can go on. And what, what what's crazy about the game is that like every character feels so developed and and and, and like lived in like they mm. all feel like e even the most minor character the more you talk to them you like get a sense of who they are in this world and like even the most minor character will have you know effects on you and like effects on the story that are that are unexpected. So uh, I don't know when whenever this episode comes out. It's on sale on the Steam store. It's like three ninety nine right now for the final cut, which has full voice acting, mm. which the previous version just had like the first couple oh. lines voice acted and then the rest you had to read. There's a lot That's of weird. Reading. This is, game is essentially a novel. There's like <laughs> so much yeah. text. There's like no, there's like that. maybe one scene where there's like any sort of combat. Otherwise, it's like mostly just talking and skill checks. Mm. That would make it better voice acting for me. I, w I yeah, it was a, it, I thought it was a novel that wanted, or a game that wanted to be a novel. But it, <laughs> yeah, there I didn't play it with voice acting, so that would make it quite different. Okay. Well, if you've got it in your Steam library, because I think I bought it before the final cut came out. Uh, mm. If if you if you bought it before the final cut came out, I think they upgraded everyone's like for free. So like I have it with like the oh, voice okay, acting. Oh, okay, nice. Okay. But. The voice acting does make a difference because the the voice performances are also very very good. Okay. Like the your there's like there's like an ancient reptilian brain and your limbic system which are two yeah. different <laughs> voices that kind I of like about that. like kind of prattle yeah. on at you. Mm. And uh some yeah. the best part is when your thoughts will argue with each other, like logic and empathy will be <laughs> or or <laughs> Or like I don't know, th there's some very like unexpectedly funny lines, where one of your thoughts will be like, "Wow, that sounded really like fascist," or "That sounded really communist," and then you can kind of respond to your thought where you're like, "I don't want to say either of these things," and and then your voice, the voice in your head will be like, "Say one of these communist things or fascist things or fuck off." <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> your your thoughts will like you know get it get on you about shit mm -hmm. like that so it's very funny it's kind of sad in a lot of places like it's basically in a in a city where a revolution failed and people are like trying to pick up the pieces and survive and live in this like very unprecedented economic system so i don't know i've, I've talked at length about this now but it's like <laughs> it's one of those games that like i beat it and it has sat with me for a long time also the music's great and the band C power that did all the music like their albums are really good and like you can find some of their old songs and you can find snippets and bits and pieces that like made it into the game mm. like oh this motif that is like this song in the game comes from this song on their album that they released in like 2012 hmm. so like that's been fun discovering like their discography and then finding all those songs that made their way into the game nice mm. so that's my pitch Hey, it's it's already on my backlog. It's <laughs> I keep hearing about it, but yeah, that that sounds. I like all the examples. It does sound pretty funny. <laughs> um, well, I I I uh, I played something very similar recently. Uh, I I finished the the I'm just kidding. I've uh, the uh, the remake of uh, the second Katamari Damacy game, uh, and in that one you play 
the prince and you have a katamari and you roll up stuff um <laughs> to uh, p- to please your father the king of all cosmos and uh it's basically the antithesis of that because it's like it's like the dumbest shit ever, but it's inc- it's like it's so fun. <laughs> I literally just I brought it up because it's like you're playing this like really heady, like talky <laughs> game, and mine is literally just roll up things in a ball over and over again. <laughs> How big can you make this ball? Yeah, it's really fun. If you guys have never played them, there it's like it's strangely <laughs> addicting. It's such it's such a satisfying game loop of just like starting tiny and just getting bigger and just rolling up bigger and bigger things it's like it's 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 weird how like addictive it is um i I played a handful of of, like kind of no i mean like that like i I do love those games i put i mentioned last time because we we recorded like right after the nintendo direct came out uh and like i said like i was a few hours into metroid zero mission I beat it the next day. <laughs> that's that's my <laughs> that's cycle great. with Metroid games is I beat mm. almost all of them in like a day or two. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, I want to. But then like I want to, you know, most games take me like, or like I'll say like an average length game will take me like a couple weeks to, to beat. So then to like appease that drive, I just do the I just play the entire Metroid series again because I could beat like all of them in about the. <laughs> the length the span of like another game um uh but i guess one that i i do kind of want to shout out is like i don't know it's it's a it's an indie one but i mean it's probably been like as as talked about as maybe as disco elysium not nowadays but ori in the blind forest which is one that i had been on my backlog for a very long time have you played that one josh or do you know about Mm. it or uh, is that the first or the second one? There's two of them, aren't there? The the first one, yeah. I, I definitely remember. I definitely want to get the second one now, but Blind Forest yeah. is the first it's, one. It's a very very good looking game. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, I I loved it. I I mean, it as I just said about a Metroid, I I do love it. Ori is is like very Metroidvania y, so it it fits in that style. So I do have a, a fondness for that genre but yeah it's really like you're you know you're kind of you're ever increasing like a movement skill set like you get faster and like more agile and stuff it's really feels really good to play and i like it's interesting because like i feel like video game stories don't emotionally affect me as often as like i can i love video games i love like stories but i don't i never feel as like personally like emotionally affected as frequently as when i watch a movie or like when mm, i read a book or yeah. something There's just something about it i don't and i don't necessarily want to say that they're just like not good you know i don't i know i don't like the you know video games aren't art or whatever like they are in their in their their way or whatever and i think that they can be but there's a lot of stuff that i'm just like yeah it's a good story it you know like but I don't really feel much, but every once in a while, there's some, and Ori really affected me. I really, really loved the story. Um, the from like the prologue, the way the prologue is done, it just it kind of like surprises you where it ends, where you play as the the big like the the fat like one who's like caretaking, because like I didn't know much about the game. I thought that that's who you played as the mm-hmm. entire game. I thought that that was Ori, but no, Ori is the little white fox spirit thing um (laughs) so like from that i was like oh shit this is this is like this is different and like i it it made me tear up at least twice uh not full on cry but like it made me tear up like two or three times like there and then as you get later into the story and you realize there's like the big the giant owl that's chasing you through the whole game that's kind of like the the primary antagonist you can't really fight it you don't have any means to like do battle with it but there's like sequences where it's like chasing you and you have to escape and stuff um but then you you get like a flashback scene where you see why it's chasing you and it's 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 done really well there's no dialogue it's all through like music and just you know 
voiceless like cutscenes and and moments. A lot of the story the the story is just in the gameplay. Like stuff will just kind of like happen as you're moving, and you'll see like oh here's a character, and now they're running off, and you got to go chase after them and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I'm really looking forward to playing the second one. Yeah, um, yeah, you should do that for right. sure. Wow, you guys are. Game players, I didn't. I, yeah, I should know that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> oh, is that what those are in the back? I did not. I cannot see them. Oh yeah, there's like N64 uh, games, like NES, GameCube, Sega. Yeah. You should you should give me a list of like your top ten or twenty, just so I can. Ooh, I know okay, it's okay. hard, but like uh, recommendations, I. I Ooh. I always uh, struggle with those because I'm always going to reviewing sites and I can't, I don't totally trust them okay. uh, for, so okay, I just want to yeah. play the best of the best. I don't want to mess with them. <laughs> okay. That's, that's fair. Games are a lot, you know, they demand a lot more of your time than movies in general. They do. So it's, no, oh, I, yeah. I totally get that. Well, that like, that's the same that's... thing with like basically anything except movies like books. I'm like, I do I, I can't I don't have time to just read like there's all these that I've heard are great but I'm like I I only have right. time to read like the the essentials <laughs> oh yeah you know well the best like, is music because music because if you you guys are album people you can just go through mm-hmm. you know, 30 to 60 minutes long oh that's easy you can just mm-hmm. if you hate it yeah move that's on, like a lot of time <laughs> yeah right <laughs> versus the yeah, game well, that's 40 hours right yeah well that's that's also partially why I wanted to bring in disco elysium and talk about it because like that's like the first like narrative you know one player game that i've played to completion in years probably oh Mm. because i i just again it's like that it's like a time issue where it's like i could start this game because i've got it you know i've got a ton of stuff in my steam library that i'm just like i should play this at some point i should play (laughs) this at some point but it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna do what i always do which is like start a file play for a couple hours and then i'm not gonna touch it again for like a couple weeks like i've started fallout new vegas plenty of times or like fallout (laughs) 3 or like but and and it's like with those games i just get a a sense of just like of dread of just like these games are so big and there's so much to do that like how much time do i reasonably have to invest in this Mm. so like disco elysium you can beat in like I would say 20 to 25 hours, maybe more if you're like really wanting to like take your time and experience like all of the different like side quests and like side characters and kind of fulfill their stuff to get like a more enriching experience. But this is like the first game in a long time where like I've played a narrative first person like single player game experience and like done it to completion. Mm -hmm. I bought this game like three years ago. And I did the same thing where I played like a few hours of it and then I never touched it again. And I'm always like, I should, di- I should get into that. I should play that again. And I finally did. So it's just like, that's my baby step into maybe trying to do that with other games. <laughs> yeah. It's a, yeah, that's the same thing. Ori, I'm pretty sure I bought like as soon as I got my Switch in 2019 and I didn't play it until this year. <laughs> it just, it just yeah, been it's... sitting there. I'm like I'm like I've heard so many good things. It looks really cool. It looks like something that I would like. But there's this other game that I've played a hundred times, but I know it, so I'm just gonna play that instead. Or like there's yeah. this other game that's really short, so I'm just gonna play that instead. Uh, but yeah. then you play it and you're like, yeah, it's great. I wish I had played it sooner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, well, since you're on games, I'll say just say I've played three this summer. I played Super Mario Odyssey because it's acclaimed. I just can't stand this game. I'm sorry. I oh no! Rag on it. I don't like the look of it. Oh, it's okay. frustrating. <laughs> but my kid and I play together. He's the hat. I'm the Mario. Whatever. Oh okay. But the oh. ones I really loved. If you've ever heard of Cocoon, the guy the who movie. made Limbo and Inside. Oh, there's oh, a new one. I do like. I do like Limbo. He made yeah. a new one. Oh. It's a beautiful game. Great. I loved Inside. I think it's that's a memorable one. If you want to hit me with emotion, it's probably the only game I felt something in. But um, Cocoon, it it just came out. I don't know when. Cool. Four or six months ago. I, yeah, check it out. I, and that's only a six or seven hour deal, which is still very wonderful. 
in in so many ways. It's not just a side scroller either, like the oh okay like inside. Oh. It's interesting. Yeah, it's a thoughtful puzzle game. Um, and then I just love Super Mario Wonder. I don't know why. It just gives me joy. I don't know okay. if you played this. So you like one? Okay. I just not. I do. I, mean, I, I do want to play. They are so imaginative in that game. It's not. It's like a Mario, you know, normal. Like a Super side scroll. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, like it's your not classic. that hard. It, there are some levels that are pretty hard, but there's a wonder seed in each level. Mm-hmm. And when you you have first of all to find it. Mm-hmm. And when you do, then the level immediately changes to something absolutely crazy. And every single level is wildly different mm-hmm. when you find that wonder seed. So it's just the imagination in that game is outstanding to me. I, I think I don't. I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I just I think that's where like Nintendo like shines with those Mario games. It's like those your stand like your your side scroller platformer Mario games like the inventiveness of like some of the level designs for those are like so so brilliant mm-hmm. like the types of levels that like teach you how to do the level without explicitly telling you like basically yeah. the, i feel like nintendo's very good at like you teach yourself through like the level design mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. how to do it and then it's like very rewarding to be like oh yeah i figured out how to do this level now uh, and the game, you 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 just have um, you get badges. I don't know if any other game does this with Mario, but badges, and you you can do special. You have one special power that you can choose. It's a badge, but you get okay. you accumulate like Interesting. thirty of these, forty, and you can choose one of them for each level. Okay. But uh, I don't. I think this is over the top for them, um, and so I really have really love that. And you can play it. Two, two to four player. It's kind of crazy with four people. Yeah. Uh, too much. <laughs> yeah, guess... Too much because one person's controlling the action going sideways, and the other three are just left to die. Oh, sometimes. really? Oh, but, yeah. But with two people, two people, it works decently well. So it's good, good for kids. Me and my, me and my kid, <laughs> or two kids, or something like that. Nice. Yeah, that's that's the other Nintendo thing is that uh, I feel like they're the only like game company these days that's like making games that everyone in the same room can play simultaneously i feel like there's such an emphasis now on like playing online with your friends just like get putting on a headset mm. and like just you have your own sort of like single player experience with everyone else like you know like you know my girlfriend's sister and her brother-in-law will like come over and like the four of us will play mario kart and it's like we're playing it on yes. one mm. tv and it feels like such a uh, like a throwback <laughs> to like a bygone era where it's like, you know, I never played Goldeneye, but, you know, the Banjo Tui, you know, uh, like egg shooting, like sort of like first person shooter mini game or like, God, Metroid Prime 2 when they had there was the like a, a multiplayer like yeah. FPS shooter type thing. Mm. It's uh, yeah, it's like most games don't do that anymore, but it's nice that with Nintendo stuff, you can still, you know, play all in the same room. Yeah. Yeah. To even where like it's almost like, it's it's literally like just to have it, just because they have it. Because like I could only imagine that it like the four player co op for like those side scores is probably total madness. But they're like, yeah, but we can do it, <laughs> so we're gonna do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a competition. You you have a flag at the end of each level. Mm-hmm. The person who jumps the highest on that flag gets to be the leader. And then, oh, okay. so we're all trying to help each other out until the end, and then we're all competing for it at the end because we all want to be the leader. <laughs> that's so fun. Kind of fun that way. <laughs> that's fun. That's, uh, that's good. That's interesting. So, so what? I, I'm I'm curious now that you said that you you hated the you said you hated the look primarily <laughs> of Odyssey, but then you you really like Wonder. So it's not just I was like, oh, maybe you just don't like Mario games, but it's not that. It's just like. Is is oh, it no. just like frame rate or like the like the light? I'm just trying to think of like what is it about the look in particular because it looks very like just <laughs> Mario to me. I'm finding it hard to uh, maybe it's me conceptualize a 3D world and move in it. And I oh, uh, so you'd never played like Super of... Mario 64 or anything like that? Nope. Oh, okay. No, uh, no. This is my first 3D, 3D Mario game, which okay. Zelda is no problem. All the all the, all the Zelda incarnations three dimensionally. So yeah, it's not as much like I don't know. It's just me and hard. me and jumping in the 3D world. Okay, Maybe that's it. I see. Okay. I see. If that if that is your first 3D Mario, that is like 
it is a <laughs> totally different like play it's style. a lot to take in yeah. that game too <laughs> um if you're looking for recommendation zone you like side scrolling platformers if you haven't played them uh i recently played the switch version of donkey kong country tropical freeze awesome amazing like the look of it the music is great pretty challenging um and then when i played a couple years ago that i really like too is uh rayman legends um oh i love rayman have you played rayman legends you know know they're making a movie of that are they really (sighs) which i couldn't imagine what that is there's no voices (laughs) in that game but yeah both raymond's um there's another one too are very fun okay Sweet. You've played Legends, the more recent one, or or like more like the original ones. I can't remember which. I, there, I played two of them. Okay. Legends is. And they must be the recent two. Okay. Uh. It's from like. It's from Origins. Origins, yeah. So Origins, that was the one yeah. right before that. I Origins thought, yeah. and Legends. Okay. Yeah. There's nice. my uh, copy of playstation one rayman <laughs> nice <laughs> um yeah i i just i love how like fast paced and like crazy that game gets and that's what like when i see super mario wonder it reminds me a lot of some of the the vibe of rayman legends um it's like how fast it gets there's like the music levels i know yeah. they have music levels in wonder but they have the music ones that are like licensed music in Rayman Legends. Yep. Like they have, what do they do? They have that black. Oh, the black end. Betty yeah, song the end. When you, yes. And you got like, uh, well, there's all the uh, notes and stuff. Yes, Black Betty, right? Yeah, I can't remember the other ones, but there's a few. <laughs> they're very fun. They're pretty fun. Yeah. Yep. Um. Well, yeah, I'd have to think. I don't know. It's what it, was the other one? Donkey Kong what? Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. It originally came out for the Wii U, but they did a Switch like re-release, so it might be like oh. HD or something <laughs> like that. Um, I'd never played a Donkey Kong Country before, but I I adored it. So I'm I'm actually playing mm. the original one from the Super Nintendo. I'm working my way through that one on the the Nintendo Switch Online thing because they have the whole the oh whole this would be this would be fabulous. I don't think I've seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It it's pretty challenging, especially if you try to do like all the special levels. Um, I've played a few levels of Tropical Freeze, and it yes, it does get very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the nice thing is, is, in the Switch version, they do have Funky Mode, where you can play as Funky Kong, and it's basically like the easy mode. So if you just want to like play through the game, uh, you can do that, and it like I think it gives you extra hearts. And then it basically gives you everybody's ability. Like in the in the main game, you're Donkey Kong, but then you get partners. You can either have like Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, or Cranky Kong, and they each have their own unique ability, like assist ability. And if you're Funky Kong, you have everybody's ability all the time. <laughs> mm. uh, um, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it's really good. As far as like a wider like game recommendation, that's it's harder to do. I think than movies because it's it's really just like, you know. I mean, it seems like you're, you are fairly familiar. Or you, jam, uh, like no Nintendo, and that is that is my bread and butter. Not that that's all that I play, but that is kind of where I, where I cut my teeth, so mm-hmm. to speak. So I'm still a Nintendo boy. I didn't I didn't until recently. We bought a Switch. I don't know a couple of years ago. We would okay. play Breath of the Breath of the Wild, and then. Okay. I have four kids and two of them want to play it, so then we get all the the ones we can play together, you know, Mario right. Kart, etc. Yeah. Well, it's that's uh, I will say like my my favorite video game series is the uh, I must uh, uh, Legend of Zelda. Um, mm-hmm. So if you want like what's my favorite what like if yeah like the, what I say is like my favorite game is it's the it's the Wind Waker it's the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Oh. Um, Okay, but it's like, is that gonna be? It, it's it's a, it's just it's weird, like recommending stuff because like I could see somebody playing that now and not feeling the same way that I did because it's like, especially after stuff like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom that are so open and free, 
you go back to something before that and it's like it's more straightforward linear and like you know my my favorite games are a lot more of like a, a personal like attachment than just like i think this is like the, you know this is the best made game ever stuff like yeah. that yeah oh sure yeah although i mean i could defend a f- you know a few of mine to saying like no these are like like some of the best <laughs> or whatever <laughs> um, well, my favorite still fallout new vegas so you've got to try it yeah I, that's <laughs> I one really I, do. I, really I have do. that I've game played it a lot i played it i don't seven eight times that's, that's wild <laughs> yep i think yeah, it's I think hilarious I, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, I got it. Uh, I got like uh, the the game of the year edition, or I think I've got whatever like the one on Steam. So I think I've got like the full thing. But yeah, I I gotta. I just yeah, I gotta do it. Definitely after watching the show, I'm more kind of like in. in oh, like yeah. I, I really wanna really oh, wanna right. try Vegas. Yeah. That yeah the 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 show references all of them I don't re- I can't it, remember I think it so it pull <laughs> it pulls from all of them it's not it's yeah. not like straight doing the story of any one game but you see yeah. like even not I haven't played every single Fallout game but I've, I've played a couple but like you know I'm like okay that's from that game that's from New Vegas I know that like I I kind of knowing yeah. like the general lore. Um, it's pretty fun though. The sh- the show's really fun. Um uh but yeah, I was just uh, you can't even really see it. That's my little I don't have much of a physical game collection cuz mine's split between like me and my siblings' houses cuz we all played video games oh. growing up. So it's like I have some of the games, they have some of the games. Yeah. Um so mm. I mostly just have my my board games. <laughs> that's my that's my big show. Um, in terms of recommendations for for me, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you like Fallout New Vegas, like if you like role playing <clears throat> games at all, I do think like the first two Paper Mario games are fantastic. Um, okay. sure. For the they, Nintendo sixty, re- yeah, Thousand Year Door Switch version. Mm-hmm. That's the Thousand Year Door. That's a. It's like a remake of the GameCube one. Mm-hmm. So that's because they're like. The Paper Mario franchise that has more than those two games, but those first two are the ones that like retain the sort of turn-based combat and like leveling oh. up and getting different partners with different abilities. The other ones are more, I guess, like action adventure games that sort of uh, they're aesthetically similar, but in terms of gameplay, are just like very very different. And honestly, I haven't really touched any of those games. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think Super Paper Mario for the Wii is, like, okay. Some people like that one. Mm-hmm. But, again, only the first two really retain that, like, turn-based combat RPG style. And then uh, I'm also a big fan of the Earthbound slash Mother games, which uh, that's where the character Ness comes from if you play, like, Super Smash Brothers. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't really recommend the first game. Uh, it's called I think it's called Earthbound Beginnings in the Switch store. Uh, mm-hmm. It's like one of those old school NES games where it's like it's it's role playing game and it has turn based combat, but it doesn't tell you shit on like what you're supposed to do at all. <laughs> and so I could okay. I can see it being a very frustrating experience, like in in like that old NES game hard game experience. Hmm. Uh, but Earthbound. Uh, is like the Super Nintendo game. And that game is another one. It, it's like, it's turn-based combat. You get partners. The story, it's kind of like the satirical look at American life from like the Japanese perspective. So like there's like some jokes about American culture in there. Uh, but then like the game, the game will unexpectedly get very dark in, in certain spots. Um, the music's really good in it. And then if you're really ambitious... You can find a way to translate the third game in the series, Mother 3, which never got localized and released over here in the United States, but like professional translators have translated the game. Wow. So you can download like a ROM and then download a patch that will convert it to English and you can still play it. Um, that game is much darker, but still kind of has this very colorful palette to it. 
um i'd recommend that series if you like like sort of like rpgs and turn-based games mm. paper mario and like the earthbound series are very good like yeah. rpg story rich yeah. games yeah i wasn't then, sure like, whether they get Metroid paper Prime mario or not i paper mario i had no idea what it was so i saw reviews on it but i had no idea yeah, the N64 yeah, Paper Mario, and then, yeah, just pick up the remake uh, for the mm. Switch that they just dropped. Mm-hmm. They are, they're okay. so charm. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door in particular is so charming and so funny. Bowser is, like, the funniest character that in that entire <laughs> game. He becomes, like, kind of a, just a, a caricature. Like, he's just this this doofus that can never, like, yeah. get it right. It's mm. it's so funny, and then the game, the music, and the gameplay, everything about it is is fantastic. Mm. Can't recommend that wow. enough. Yeah. And then, I guess not. I, I don't mean to like pigeonhole myself literally into this just this one genre, but I'm I'm in the middle of a of a really long uh, YouTube retrospective of the Castlevania series, um, which is another series that I I love, but I've there's so many fucking games in that series <laughs> um that like there's so much of it that i haven't experienced but mm. and i i'm honestly even like they're they don't get as much love as a lot of other games but you can play some of the better games uh in the there are some like collections available online there's just like the castlevania anniversary collection which is some of the early ones and boy those are brutal some of those games in that series are incredibly tough um but then if you get the anniversary collection it's a little more modern sorry i just said that the castlevania advance collection it's a collection of some of the game boy advance titles and you can get this on the switch or steam i think um and that has aria of sorrow which is one of the best if not like the best one uh it's fantastic and then if you can somehow i don't know where at least not with the nintendo system get your hands on uh symphony of the night just amazing like aria of sorrow symphony of the night i like dawn of sorrow too portrait of ruin um a lot of the titles kind of blend together if you don't know the series it's all just like (laughs) adjective of gothic (laughs) kind of thing um but really great and i would say try to go into them as blind as you can and also when you get to the end keep playing these games are filled with like twists and turns that like really encourage exploration and kind of seeing more it's it's so cool there's some really really cool like i think that's one of the things that again try not to spoil it for yourself but i think that's one of the things that like symphony of the night is known for is just an insane like what it where it kind of takes you with uh you know kind of looking looking past the credits i guess i don't know try not to like say (laughs) too much but it 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 does a lot of i'll say the series is kind of known for fake out endings um (laughs) (laughs) um I had no idea there were all these Castlevania games. I stopped at the Super Nintendo <laughs> version, the first okay, one. <laughs> you played this so Super Castlevania Four or whatever. Yeah, so I'm looking at how many after that there are. There's like thirty or something. That's crazy. I haven't played the last few, and there's like plenty on like the PS2. Like I haven't played, uh, like is it like Lords of Shadow or something? I never like touched those ones or. Uh, Lament of Innocence, one I was interested in, but wow. never got around to that one. Um, but I always get those games mixed up with uh, Ghosts and Goblins, and I just want to say, oh, the early don't ones. play those. Don't yeah. play those. Those <laughs> games are so frustrating and just, like, mean, and they make you so mad. I don't know. Have you played any of those, the Ghosts and Goblin games? Oh, yeah. Long time <sighs> oh. Not through, but yeah, I've played. I've played one all. of the most fu- like frustrating experiences I've ever had playing. A game. Oh. <laughs> even with like, I got that on the 3DS, and even with save states, I was like, "This sucks." Yeah, that's that's the original <laughs> Metro. That's the original Metroid for me. I still think that's like yeah. the most yeah. frustrating game experience. Is fucking <laughs> Turian and the and Mother Brain. Oh, 
no, that's legitimately some of the, the NES Castlevania titles. Like, number three, I think, is, like, they're very fucking difficult. <laughs> really fucking difficult games. They they get they get easier the more like modern you you go like like the ones that I mentioned like Dawn of Sorrow Symphony of the Night are really easy compared to some of those early titles. Mm. Um, but uh, I guess you know I I kind of wanted to go into it anyways. And we're, we've been talking about it for so long. There is there is a a website called Backlogged that I describe that I discovered recently. That's basically letterboxed for video games um, to where they even have a section on your profile on Backlogged where you can link your letterboxed profile. <laughs> so they're kind of like tied in together. Um, and I just filled out my whole catalog the other day. So I'm all I'm all caught up. So <laughs> if you want want more more recommendations, you can make that. At, Follow add me, me on Backlogged. I got I got. Yeah, <laughs> got my whole my whole backlog profile set up pretty fun i take i take my reviews a little less seriously than i would on letterbox not that i'm always super serious on letterbox either but <laughs> um it's oh, pretty no. fun I'm it's gonna get I, sucked into this i yeah backlogged it's really e. yeah so back oh, it's b-a-c-k-l-o-g-g-d so kind of like letterboxed how they like cut out the the ear or whatever it's re- it it is like even even if you don't use it as like a social media tool, it's really nice for like just categorizing your games because you can put like add stuff to a wish list, add stuff to your backlog, add to what you're currently playing. It's just a really handy way to kind of like, you know, uh, organize your your video game experience or whatever. And that's what I did to, when I brought up the games that I that I talked about because when i don't have anything written down to like talk about for the show i'll go to my letterbox and like okay what did i what did i watch recently yeah. and i'll just look at that and i'm like oh, okay okay i can talk about that so i didn't really have anything that i watched so i went to my backlog and i was like what did i play recently <laughs> <laughs> um it's, yeah is that you, you get you just says them up. I don't I don't have any friends on this one. <laughs> it's not it's not quite a, it's not nearly as popular as a uh, as Letterbox. So um, oh maybe it'll get there though. I don't know. Maybe it might. Yeah. There's, There's nothing a, else like this online. Uh, I don't know. Social. Okay. I don't know. Um. For like strictly for video games, I I don't know. Not that I, not that I know of. I'm um, gonna feel really old filling this one out. <laughs> <laughs> the NES is gonna be, yeah. Be <laughs> Maybe some Atari out. if I think about it. <clears throat> um, I like the idea of like rating those like Atari games, like yeah, what, what? but like with a letterbox, just like you know, sort of like, <laughs> you know, writing like six paragraphs about, <laughs> you know, uh, what. what pong or or whatever the other ones were <laughs> adventure like, um, I, i'm giving custer's revenge a two and a half star on backlogged um it's you know <laughs> yeah yeah those are those are tough i i used to be big into like old arcade games so i actually have a fair amount of oh, like yeah. 70s 80s arcade games like logged joust. on here i've beat a I'm few big fan joust of joust. Good, yeah yeah i don't think i have that one on here um, but we even had like those old like those plug and plays, you know, where you just had like a controller and you plugged it directly into your TV. There was yep. an Atari one for that, so I actually have beaten mm. uh, a couple like old Atari games. And yeah, they are weird to review up against like you know you have Adventure that's literally a square moving around this very basic map, <laughs> and it's like how do you rate that compared to Ori in the Blind Forest? <laughs> or yeah. Tony Hawk's pro skater or you know like it's it's such a weird it's such a more like weird medium to review than movies not that you know right. there there's subjectivity to all art of course i'm not saying that there is one objective truth <laughs> to any piece of art 
but I, I still feel like in, in other mediums, it's easier to kind of like find like the way line for what is considered good in general. Uh, but video games, I feel like it's, it's way more just like, is it fun? You know, is it entertaining? (laughs) And like, that's literally it. So that's why like a lot of my, my reviews on letterboxd, I'm like, I'm trying to weigh like my personal feelings with like critical analysis, but, but on backlogged, it's literally Mm -hmm. just how much fun did I have? And that's it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's like all I go off of. Okay. All right, this was a long one. That was a long. That was a meaty back back half. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like once you get us talking about video games, it's pretty easy to like. Yeah, <laughs> get going. I know. I'm. I'm surprised. It's funny. Like we haven't ever like explicitly like really gone into it before. But you were like, "Oh, so you guys play video games?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm a bit of a gamer. Like, <laughs> you know, I play video games." <laughs> We we actually uh, I'm I'm pulling out the cup don't worry, we actually have a a couple special episodes of this show where we just talk about video games like that oh, we we f- okay. we kind of shirk movies and we do uh we do video games instead. Well, um, w- once you play Fall of New Vegas, you know, then you just got me for like eight hours here. We'll just uh, <laughs> I don't know what 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 that will be. It'll be a long. Ah. Uh, Maybe that'll maybe that'll be my next my next uh, adventure. <laughs> I did immediately start a second playthrough of Disco with like a different character archetype, and I've already like encountered characters and in, in situations that I didn't experience in my first playthrough, mm. which is really cool. Yeah. Gonna try um. to not be a racist this time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, uh, you know, I think maybe that's that's the message of this show yeah, definitely take that of out this, of, of this movie <laughs> just like of, isolate no. that clip <laughs> maybe in another life i cannot be a racist <laughs> <laughs> okay um well uh it's time for uh, another dud movie oh um, boy. i <laughs> i'm excited for this one I, I i hope i i know i know you said your your schedule is a uh, a little iffy but i i hope you can come back for this one josh just because i feel like i feel like little italy was a softball i think (laughs) for for a dud movie i think i think this one is going this is a movie that is uh i've seen too many times um not a lot but more than once is too many times um And I think it's like <laughs> 70 minutes long or maybe less. But even with that, it's going to be a challenge to get through it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, from 1991, Asterisk, directed by Elton Rains, Asterisk, Space Thunder Kids. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, oh, and the reason there's no. Asterisk by that is uh, something we can I can – get into more uh when we oh when we talk about it gosh look at the rating on letterbox <laughs> this but what these... is so wrong with this movie that this could happen so i know more about these movies than probably most people i've done a lot of like digging and research on this series of movies i actually own this movie on dvd <laughs> um I got it from like the fifty cent bin at Walmart, like in like two thousand two or something like that. I think they're available. They're like you can get all most of them for free on YouTube. Um, yeah, which is nice because otherwise I don't know where the fuck you would find these movies. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh. So yeah. So let's. let's yeah. Space I'm, Thunder I'm, Kids. I'm excited. Uh. Watch it. Watch it before next week's episode if you don't want to be spoiled. If that's if that's literally even possible for this movie, <laughs> um, you can watch it. You can watch the entire movie, and I don't know if you'll be spoiled because you won't know what the fuck is happening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So watch it before next week's episode if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, these episodes come out on Wednesdays at seven p.m. EST on 
YouTube and video form as well as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more in audio form. Um, we also have social pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, uh, Josh, you want to plug yourself again? It, it almost feels weird because you're you're almost just like a you're you're the you're the fifth beetle here. You you know, but you can still feel free to like you know plug your sub stack. We we'll st- we still throw your stuff in the description and everything so just go look me up youtube learn okay about movies. all right i've got so many yeah just go go see the out. new quiet place movie i didn't know i didn't but i i saw uh i saw your sub stack like come through my inbox and I s- <laughs> <laughs> you might like it i don't know I do have a morbid curiosity. I saw like a Quiet Place Part Two when it came. I saw that one when it came out in theaters, but it was like it was that sort of like post-pandemic glow of like Quiet Place Part Two is probably not that great. But I'm in a movie theater and I haven't been in one of these in like three years, so like I'm excited to see a movie in theaters. So like I gave it probably way more like leniency than it than it was due. But I do have a morbid curiosity to see the third installment in this franchise. <laughs> I, I I did I did see your YouTube video pop up in my my subscriptions. It's it's in my watch later. I'm like, do I need to watch the movie first before I I might just watch the review and just call that good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could be wrong. Everybody might love this, and I hate it. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I mean honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if it's a. Uh, not good Eight, you know 87 percent tomato meter you know wow but, okay i look it, you know if you love rotten cats, tomatoes is bought and sold <laughs> yeah the, the cat will survive and it's in every scene in this movie oh that's good that is good to know that is that is good to know yeah and you will be pleased all right cool <laughs> so good good movie is what we're saying you <laughs> <laughs> might like it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh anyways, with with all with all that said, uh I I've got the conch. So I'm I'm speaking. I'm 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 the leader. Uh and my name's TJ and with me as always. <laughs> uh as always um you know, my name's Nick, but I d- I don't care what you call me as long as you don't call me Piggy, if you call me Piggy in front of everybody else, it's gonna be so embarrassing. So you better not call me Piggy in front of everybody else. But uh, and and I am Nick, and with us today. Well, I'm Josh Matthews, and I am the only one not wearing glasses here. Oh, you are. So yeah, you're the, you're the superior. I think one. I might survive, and you might. Not. I think that's true. Yeah. Shit. My my specs. Yeah. My specs. <laughs> when, s- sucks to your asthma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 